if you played Alice in the Dolly's Life of Sugar Water. Um, it's been four years since we last performed the Dolly's Life of Sugar Water at the National Theatre. And um, I still look back on it as um, the most profound piece of work that I've ever been a part of. And working with Amit and Grey Eye and Arthur to bring this story of something that's incredibly painful and something that happened to so many people out there, but to present it through the prism of disability and um, being disabled was an immense experience. And, um, you know, um, four years on, uh, I'm now married and I have a child myself. So it, it's been something that I constantly reflect back to um, and appreciate even more so um, for this experience. Um, I don't know, I just think um, what Jack Thorne does with his writing is he... ...and he brings... balance between grief and humour and uh, the normal and the weird in a sort of magical way and uh, The Solid Life of Sugar Water reminds me of how compelling his writing is, um, for which I would be always very grateful. Um, I I'm still acting, so um, last year I was in trying to first the accident, um, which was also written by Jack Thorne, and I'm also writing now too, so I've got a few projects on the horizon that I'm really, really excited about. Um, in terms of advice for um, anybody who wants to get involved in theatre or television or just the creative space, um, and if you're deaf and disabled, then we need you. Um, we need you because... Growing up, we didn't get to see those role models of people with disabilities on our stages or on our television screens. And we need you more, more now than ever because the only way that we're going to get representation on screen and off screen and tell the stories that we need to tell are if we get more involved. And so being proactive and being determined to break those boundaries and to engage and interact with the, this creative industry is so important. And uh, there's a community of like-minded people out there um, who are happy to support you and um, to be in. And I feel very privileged to be part of it. And that was one of the best jobs and theatrical experiences of my life. Uh, it was uh, a brilliant play with a brilliant company and uh, I felt so lucky to be part of it at the time because we were the first Grey Eye production to ever be at the National Theatre, fully disabled cast and to be doing a brand new Jack Thorne play, it was just the best. Um, it was a show that taught me a lot about how to be an actor, especially doing a very tough play tough subject matter, two-hander, just two actors on stage, you don't get to leave to go and do the crossword backstage. It was very intense, but really did teach me a lot. Um, my favourite memory of the whole experience was when we were, finally got to the National Theatre, and when we got our call, we, uh, Jen and I, would have to walk in our pyjamas from the dressing rooms of the theatre through the foyer where everyone was waiting to go see another show uh, and all the bemused looks of uh, punters that would get uh, as we walked from the dressing rooms to the shed. Uh, that's quite a vivid memory that sticks in my mind. And Sugar Water, the documentary, is um, a really great film and uh, I was lucky enough to go to Moscow a few years ago for the International Disabled Film Festival uh, to represent the film there. and. I remember the, uh, Joe and uh, the crew being around uh, filming us at that time and 
Uh, I'm just so glad that the whole experience was captured on film um, at that point for uh, everyone to now enjoy. Thank you. You're really settling in to the space now. It's really, really great to see. And you're just, you're just opening up the performances and everything. Brilliant. Um, so, um, I just, I just want to just want to tidy up a couple of things. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. <laughs> Did you say cheesecake? <laughs> I'm that good at lip reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's um, not an easy word to lip read. It's no. all in the back. And if you have never, because he's going, happy amateurs, I salute you. I normally would. I was just trying to I know, I know. Out of my... But also in Cambridge, I've all, it's, it's, you've it's really got It's a bit understated. It's a bit understated. OK. It's, it's a bit too considered, and it's got to be... Don't it's... stay considered. It's a bit too considered. I said too considered. I didn't say considered by itself. My you just, but you just got to really rat it out Landed. there. So, and then when you're in, you know, it was loving, it was touching, it was genuine. Yeah. And you're doing that. Keep the energy. It's brilliant, that and energy is boom. there. And then it's boom. As artistic director of Grey Eye, you can imagine just how excited I am that Grey Eye is finally at the Lafayette Theatre. I never thought it would happen, really. It's just amazing, and it feels... It's right. It's just right that we are here. They asked if I want to hold it. I think the nurse called it it back to them. It was a girl! I don't hold on. I know that he. Anybody with any access requirement, be that they are blind, that they are deaf, that they have mobility issues, should be able to come and see a grey eye show, any grey eye show. <laughs> To be at the National is something really special and to be part of Grey Eye's first show at the National feels like a massive honour that I consider Grey Eye the National Disabled Theatre of England and to be here when Grey Eye finally is part of the National Theatre as it should have been for a very long time is something special. My whole kind of attitude as an artist is that everybody's different and everybody's wonderful for what they are. So that's very much the concept of Grey Eye. They're all wonderful people and I'm just happy to be involved with them. This is not just for Grey Eye. It's for all the deaf and disabled artists that are out there saying, come on, this is a national stage and it's yours. It's ours and it's yours, it's all of ours.